you know, hey, last weekend, obviously, uh, you know, you, you always go in hoping to get, you know, some points out of the weekend. And, and um, you know, we ended up with one, not not nearly enough. And, uh, you know, give Penn State credit. They, they played well. And, and uh, but I thought you know, our probably our biggest issue was just just inconsistency and not not really just from shift to shift, but period to period. And in the Big Ten, if you don't, hey, you got to play a whole 60 or 65. And if you don't, uh, points are going to be hard to come by. So, you know, there were some things we did all right, but but overall, uh, I'd say, you know, pretty average uh, weekend for us. And, hey, some things uh, we got to address moving forward. And we've got Ohio State coming in at a had a very good uh, practice yesterday. We got some good work in, and uh, um, we'll continue to prepare for Ohio State. And, hey, got to gotta learn and then and then move on, and, and, and that's what we're doing. We got somebody that's... So we are also keeping a Unmuted here. On the White House today, as we know Donald Here we go. You can you mute, please? There you go. Neil, go ahead. Neil, you're here, Neil. I'm muted. I got. Uh, if you've seen anything different from what you've looked at Ohio State on video from the time you played them the last time a month and a half ago? Uh, you know, hey, everybody's, everybody evolves a little bit, um, you know, year over year though, you know, you know, Riley does a good job there. And, uh, um, you know, there, there's always little, little bumps and all that, but, but, but nothing drastic. And, and, you know, really, uh, you know, you, you take a little bit out of, out of them and obviously you make adjustments and, and you're ready for things. But, you know, right now, I think there's more, uh, at least this part of the week for us, uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, the, the focus was on us and, and getting some things straightened out that, uh, that we as a staff thought we had to, uh, had to address. And, and um, you know, uh, the X's and O's don't matter uh, sometimes if, if you don't have uh, the guys going the right way. So, like I said, we, we were focusing on a lot of that in the last couple of days, and then we'll address Ohio State here a little bit later on. But you guys thought you played pretty well against Ohio State down there over Thanksgiving, right? Oh, I, yeah, I did. You know what? That, that was, uh, you know, some of the things that we liked in that series are, are you know, some of the things we haven't liked in uh, uh, the past weekend where I thought I thought we played fairly fast. We attacked. We had a good good shot mentality and uh, yeah, did, did a lot of things well. And and, uh, you know, that was a weekend where, you know what, we, we felt we, we did some good things over a, over a, a good period of time. So, no, we, we were happy with that. Uh, you know, not not satisfied with uh, again the, the number of points. Maybe we came out of that weekend, but but again, if you, if you play well and you know you have some things to build on, and and uh, we uh, we thought we did some some things very well that weekend. Graham, and it, it seemed like the the just the post game comments you had were the most um, the first time I've seen you really frustrated with the team. And you talk about certain things to get addressed. Uh, sort of what are those things and, um, and and how did those how did that situation sort of manifest itself uh, in ways that it hadn't before this season? Yeah, you know, I, I just I felt when we got done with, again, it was just it, it was a very inconsistent, you know, six periods uh, plus a little bit of overtime and and you know, that, that has to be, you know, your, your, your work ethic and, and, and your, your, I say your, your effort and your attitude, you know, that just has to be the barrier entry. And I thought, um, I thought we were, we were on our heels a bit and I, I didn't think, you know, um, you know, maybe the energy and the, the enthusiasm was there that, that you need to have there. And I don't like, Hey, you're going to find games where, where hey, you're under the gun and, and you're defending more than you want. Um, and that, that's just the ebb and flow of hockey games and you deal with that. But um, a lot of it I thought was, was self-inflicted and uh, you know, some, some, you know, the neutral zone's a big part of hockey now. And, you know, they used to, used to talk about, Hey, the game's won in the corners and that's that there's still, you know, a, a decent amount of truth to that, but, but a lot of it's in the neutral zone and how you transition from offense to defense and defense to offense. And um, I didn't like the way uh, we, we did either. And, and um, I, I thought that we just, Hey, sometimes you you have too many passengers, and and that's that's what it felt like. And that I don't know if it's I'd rather be angry angry than than frustrated. Frustrated doesn't get much done. I I actually uh, as, as a player and a coach uh, function rather well with a little bit of anger, and that that gets me uh, uh, gets me going, and and uh, um, it, it works. But hey, there's there's things that we've got to do better and there are things within control of our team. And um, I thought yesterday on the ice, 
if, if we'd have played Friday and Saturday like we practiced yesterday, we'd uh, we'd have probably had more than one point over the weekend. Uh, Ian from Channel Six. Hi, Dan. Uh, first, I just want to introduce myself. I just started at Channel Six not too long ago, um, but I was just kind of wondering: has there been any guys step up in the locker room that really have sensed that frustration within you that have really kind of get get more out of the team as well? Well, you don't you know you don't need to be a uh, FBI profiler to uh, read my body language. So I think that was I don't think they needed a translator. Um, but that being said, you know, our, our captains have, have done a good job, you know, uh, both the time he's there, APAP and Miller and then and, and Lewandowski and Dennis is on, you know, real, you know, just just solid guys and good in the room. And that's why they got a ton of votes for captain. And they, you know, I met with them yesterday and, and we talked about a few things and actually asked, hey, asked their advice and said, hey, what, you know, we met as a coaching staff every every morning. We always meet for about an hour and go through things. And then I got feedback from those guys and then feedback from the captains was was spot on I mean they you know it, it was they, they they listed everything we had talked about and, and that's good um you know a, you know a certain amount of introspection is uh uh you know is valuable for young men so it was good and that's you know they, that's the message has to go and it's not hey, it's, it's it's it was it's not doom and gloom it's hey, you know what we we're, were ticked off we didn't have the weekend we wanted and um there's lots of teams that go through that how you respond is important and I thought the guy like I said the guys did a good job in that and then after that the seniors are are real good and uh you know like you know Gino Estevez and and uh um you know Austin Kamer and and uh um and, and, and Schmitty, this, the, those guys just, just do a nice job and, and, and they kind of know the, the, the culture and the things we want. And when, they, when they're not up to snuff, uh, the guys address it. And I, I, I like that about this group. So I'm not, not mad at the group. I'm just saying, Hey, we hey, let's figure out and move forward. And that's every season's like that. And you hit a bump and uh, you know, the, the key is, you know, you don't want to make the same mistakes and you, you figure it out. And that's, that's part of the fun is figuring out the journey. That's, you know, it was easy and everything went just the way you wanted it. I've had some real good seasons and none of them had that hundred percent. And you, like I said, you work through it and see how they respond. Guys responded very well. And I assume we'll, we'll keep getting better. Scott. Hey coach, uh, two quick questions. First off, uh, could you explain maybe your choice to go 13 and six this past weekend as compared to uh, 12 and seven, which you were kind of running uh, the past yeah. couple of series? Yeah, you know, it varies on certain things. We, we did have a couple guys up front that were, were, were bumped up and, you know, or banged up a little bit. And, you know, you're not sure, you know, how they're going. If one goes down, then it's nice having that extra guy. And then, uh, you know, if, if, if everybody's a, you know, hundred percent, then maybe we go seven. Cause you know, Paul Connor's given us some real, some real good minutes and done a really nice job of killing penalties. He's, he's got a physical presence, so it's good to have him in, but you know, you move it around and you try and keep guys involved and different guys in games. And, you know, other than uh, um, Cal Dibbets, who, you know, he'll get in at some point other than him, we've, we've had guys uh, moving in and out and, and doing a nice job for us. So yeah, there, there's a little bit of, you know, kind of where guys are at, but then there's also, you know, a feel on, um, you know, if, if seven D men, it's, it's not quite enough ice time for some guys. So, so we kind of go back and forth on it, but it's also good to get guys into the games. Cause you never know at some point, you know, now Powell has, you know, we had the one game where, where he had to play uh, quite a bit and he had some experience and that helped out and, you know, the same thing up front. And also obviously late in the game on a Saturday, we saw Charlie go off and then come back with an ice pack and then, Brody kind of ate toward the bench. Do we have a little status update on them? Uh, injuries? <laughs> Be out on yeah. Saturday? I call Vegas every Thursday and give them our injury report like the NFL. So you can check that. No, I, I'm not big on talking about injuries. Hey, every, everybody, if, if you play, if you play hard and Brody Stevens and Charlie Combs play hard, you're going to have ice bags after. And you know what? Our, our hope is that everyone's ready to go on, uh, on Saturday at four o'clock. Neil. Dan, your uh, seven, eight hour bus trip to uh, Penn State, uh, did it remind you of your days in the uh, program and also maybe coaching the AHL? And how did your team sort of handle it? Something that they probably weren't used to after all these years. Yeah, you know what? It was uh, it wasn't bad. I, you know, that's not, you know, seven hours isn't a isn't a bad amount of time. And and, 
you know, watched a couple movies and uh, um, Bob Bullock, you know, he, he was driving us and he stopped about four hours in and we got out and stretched our legs for 15 minutes. And, you know, it, it was kind of a nice day and I, I kind of like it. You get out of the office and, you know, you can turn your phone off a little bit and, and uh, you know, watch some hockey or watch a movie or catch up on some reading. And, uh, you know, what? I think everybody, everybody's fine with it and it seemed like a decent day. And it was, it was kind of nice to get there and, and have, you know, get in, have a little dinner and it was relaxing. And then, hey, and coming back wasn't too bad either. And they, you know, the, the teams have been working with each other. If we can play early and, you know, we jumped in at uh, three o'clock uh, to get back and then we don't have to burn an extra day off. So, so that worked out uh, well. And, you know, we were in about one o'clock and, and that just makes Sunday feel like a day off. You get in it, and I do remember it. I mean, and uh, have spent some time on some buses. You get in at four or five, six in the morning. That that day off doesn't feel <laughs> like a day off. I mean, you're, you're kind of banged up and, you know, you've been on the bus and back hurts and, you know, and really and then Monday, you're just trying to get yourself feeling normal. So I think that was, that was good. And, you know, like I said, we're doing that for other teams, you know, and the only thing that gets in the way of that is, is TV. And if they, they decide we have to play at seven, but I think everybody's trying to get the other teams out of town a little early. Cause you know what, we're, we're not flying uh, obviously uh, as much as we were uh, before. And, you know, that, that's the easy way to go, but. But it was all will right. You still, will you still fly to Minnesota, though? Uh, yes. Yeah, we'll fly to Minnesota. We'll bus to Wisconsin, though. Okay, so I thought. Graham. Yeah, and another uh, impact of this pandemic year is that it doesn't count against a year of eligibility for these guys. And I, I'm wondering, it, it will you will, will the guys who are uh, seniors eligibility wise will some of these guys have the opportunity to come back next year and some I, I know may want to move on anyway what, what will that process be for you and for them as uh, as the you know after this season yeah it's you know it's something you, you start looking at and you know there there are some advantages to it and then you know recruiting wise there's there there's some disadvantage you know we've got you know we've got a certain amount of guys that 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 are ready to come in and I think it'll be a combination of both and looking at if it's the right fit for the young man coming back and you know maybe he wants to work on his master's degree but you know there's a fair amount of guys that are going to want to move on and play pro hockey which is where you know hey that's what they want to do and then also depending on on guys that have committed to us if, if they're ready to come out and play so we'll have a little bit of a balance uh on that and but certainly we've kind of started looking at it a little bit more now everything's kind of ironed out and, and you have to figure out Again, the timing of it, the finances, does it, does it work out for us? Does it work out for them? Um, but yeah, that's that's a discussion. And, you know, Coach Exter does a lot on the recruiting end. We're just, again, starting to dig into a little bit of that. And, uh, you know, some of the guys have asked and, and you start talking about it a little bit. But it's got to be something that, that works out for everybody. And, and again, we have we have recruits coming in that we got to be real sensitive to their, their timelines as well. Are you able to, I know in like baseball last year, they have a one-year deal where they can go over scholarship numbers, you know, to a certain extent. Are, are you able to go over the usual scholarship allotment yeah, uh, for the, uh, that one year? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a set number where they said, you know, we have 18 full that we can, and we're not head counts, so we can split those up. But those guys that come back, those, those don't, those, if they do, wouldn't count against those 18. So it is kind of a nice, a nice bonus. And one, you know, we do have the option, you know, which a lot of other sports don't have is, is a lot of our guys don't come in as true freshmen. Most of them don't, you know, they're playing juniors. So, you know, they, they have a place to go and play. Whereas in, you know, say, as you said, baseball, you know, you're done with your high school, you, you've got to come out. And, and, and that's caused, you know, quite a few guys uh, on their roster. So for us, we can probably do it without really affecting our roster size, which, which is a nice thing. Scott. Yeah, so um, obviously AJ was back in the lineup this past weekend. Um, what's obviously with him being out since the start of the second half, what kind of spark did he bring getting back in? Because obviously uh, points during the first half, he played really well with Charlie and Josh. Yeah, no, I, you know what? He, he's got a lot of speed. He's, he's got, uh, you know, good, good hockey sense. He makes plays. Um, hasn't been you know, maybe rewarded as much on the scoreboard, but, uh, but no, he, br he brings a, a good amount of, uh, of, of those things. And I thought, you know, for not being in the lineup and, and not practicing a ton, I thought he, he popped in and did, a, did actually a pretty nice job for us. He was noticeable on the good side of things. So yeah, good having him back. And, you know, the depth is a good thing and options are a good thing. And when, when you have a few guys out, then, then you lose some of that. And, uh, but no, I was, I was, I was very happy with AJ and, and glad he's back in playing. 